Hey everybody, I just picked up this, and this is a bottle of Black 3.0. It is supposedly the world's darkest, blackest acrylic paint. Uh, now, it's not to be confused with a substance called Vanta Black, which is a laboratory coating that's made out of carbon nanotubes, and it'll absorb something like 99.96 something percent of all visible light. Um, black 3.0 is just a regular paint. You can apply it to pretty much any surface with a regular paintbrush. And they say that it's going to absorb between 98 and 99 percent of all visible light. And that would be great for my purposes. Um, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos about Black 3.0, and it seems that most people who buy this stuff are just screwing around. But I actually have a legitimate purpose, and I'm hoping that this stuff is going to solve a problem that I have. So what you're looking at here is my lighting rig for my commercial photography. My wife and I run a company called Greenstone Fine Mineralia, and we sell fine mineral specimens online. Now, fine mineral specimens look best against a black background, and they usually require spotlights. You can't just throw them into a light box and you know, uh, light them up with a white background. Um, the results are not acceptable uh, for uh, commercial use. Um, so what I use is a basic three-point light setup. I've got a backlight, a key light, and a fill light, and sometimes I use diffusers depending on what I need. But to achieve the black background, I do a combination of things. Um, first off is this. All this is is a piece of scrap window glass that I have spray painted black on the back. Um, and then I went ahead and I taped it with painter's tape just to protect it from being scratched. But it doesn't matter if you use uh, matte black or gloss black spray paint. It doesn't matter what you use because the results are always the same. You get a very black mirror. Um, so I put that on my table here and what I use as the backdrop is an old piece of black felt. Uh, this felt's old enough that it's not as black as it used to be. It's kind of grayed a bit, but it generally serves the purpose because the camera is over there, and when it shoots at this angle, uh, the reflection off of the black glass is the black felt, and the results are generally a very, 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 very dark background. But most of the time, 90% of the time, I don't get a pure black background. I don't get, you know, RGB 000 pure black. I'll get something close, but not quite. So I always have to go back into Photoshop and tweak it a little bit, and it's kind of annoying. Um, so what I want to do is find a way to make it pure black every time without me having to mess around. And I'm hoping that the Black 3.0 is going to be light absorbing enough to pull that off. So. What I went ahead and I did is I got uh, these two sheets of material. Uh, this guy right here is just a piece of black foam. This one here is just a black piece of cardstock. But what I have done, because uh, the instructions for Black 3.0 say that you should apply a primer first, they recommend that you use their older version, Black 2.0, as the primer, but I don't have any Black 2.0. So I went over to Michael's and for $9 I got this. This is Uber Matte. Um, I put two coats of this on both of these sheets. Uh, as you can see, um, they're matte, but they are not black. They aren't even close to black. Um, actually, I think the cap color here that's gray is probably <laughs> a little more resemblant of what we got here. Um, it's not even near as close to black as the velvet is or the black glass. But it doesn't matter because the whole point of this is that's just the primer. I'm going to apply two coats of the Black 3.0 on top of these, and hopefully we will end up with something that is just pitch black and will suit my purposes uh, for photographing black backgrounds. Um, so what they say is that you should apply two light coats of the Black 3.0 uh, to these, and they need to dry the first coat overnight, and then the second coat needs to dry for about 20 hours in order to achieve uh, full dryness and uh, maximum blackness. So it's going to take a while to complete this, but I'm going to go ahead and start painting these, and let's just see how this stuff applies onto the cards. Okay, I've got the black 3.0. It says to shake it a bit, make sure that this is all good and ready. It says shake well before each use. I'm guessing that's probably good enough. 
And then we're going to pop it open. Dab a little bit out here. So apparently with this stuff, less is more. That's what they say. So just try and we'll try from here down. They say don't glob it on thin coats. Goes on pretty smooth and luckily the shine makes it reasonably easy to see where you've painted it versus the uh, matte black that was already there. One thing worth noting, um, when I moved this uh, painted piece of uh, board over here is that it looks a lot blacker in diffuse lighting. I'm in front of a window here, and so I'm basically seeing just outdoor light, a little bit of room light coming through. And I will tell you that these look a whole lot blacker in this lighting than they did when they were under the uh, spotlights. Anyway, I can tell that this is going to take a while to uh, get the whole thing on. So we're going to just see what happens by the time I get to the end of this. Okay, so one thing that I'm noting that may end up being a problem here is that the paint that I use to prime this it has a little bit of a fuzzy texture because it's a matte uh, spray paint. Um, it looks like it's coming up a little bit when I paint. Um, this may be an issue later, so what I think I may do when I'm done with this is I might also paint. Uh, I have more of these uh, cardstock pieces. Uh, I may go ahead and paint one that has not been primed and see if it makes any difference. But we'll just continue on with this because we have to do a second coat uh, tomorrow anyway. Okay, so I've put the first coat on and I can see as it's drying, uh, even though it's still mostly wet here, that um, the areas I did first that are starting to dry, uh, they're definitely darker than what we started with. There's no question about that. Um, here's the, uh, the other one for comparison. So it's definitely getting darker. Um, so this may work out pretty good. I'm, I'm impressed with the way it's going so far. Uh, but like I say, I'm a little bit concerned about all of this uh, uh, primer layer that I put on there. Um, it's crumbling up a little bit, but I think the second coat will be okay with that. But just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and paint a blank uh, one of these things um, as well. Well, okay, uh, that went pretty well. Um, that went really well. It seems like spray painting the foam with the, uh, the matte primer and then kind of brushing it down with paper towel to knock it down uh, was really the trick because this went on uh, way smoother than the other two uh, uh, things that I tried. Uh, meanwhile, the first one I did, it's still drying and you can see it's getting really black. I'm pretty impressed. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to say until it's totally dry exactly where we are, but just as a comparison, here's the paper where we started and here's where it is right now, uh, just a little bit later after still drying. I mean, it's still quite wet. The paper is pretty wet, but you can see it's making a huge difference. And I can tell just by looking at it that uh, it really looks black. But we'll see how it does later once it's totally dry, has a second coat. For now, I've got to let these sit overnight. Uh, and then in the morning, I will put the second coat on and then we'll wait another day. Okay, it's morning. It's a dreary, cold, windy morning, but nevertheless, uh, my three uh, pieces of material that I painted with the Black 3.0 are dry. And uh, I definitely got uh, you know, a variation of results. Um, the one that I did 
that was not primed is horrible. Uh, it is really, really patchy. And I don't know if that's just because I couldn't really see what I was doing because I had kind of this shiny paper with the shiny paint or if it really just needed to be primed, I don't know. Um, the one that was primed uh, looks uh, pretty good. Um, it's a little bit patchy and, and it still has some of that, that crud on it. Um, the foam sheet definitely came out the best. Um, little bit of patchiness, but that's to be expected from just one coat. Um, none of that uh, cruddy debris stuff on it that was on the other one. Um, this one looks really good. Um, now, I need to apply the second coat, but before I do that, I wanted to show you something else. Um, this right here is a piece of material that I picked up a few years ago at Hobby Lobby. Uh, it's basically just uh, kind of a piece of paper with velvet on it. And this was, I picked this up because this was the darkest material I could find. It's the dark, darkest material I've ever found anywhere. Um, and I tried using it for a while with my lighting setup. The problem was this piece is really just too small for my purposes, but it is darker than the velvet that I'm using right now. Um, and as you can see here, it's significantly darker than one coat of black 3.0. So I'm beginning to have my doubts. Uh, the second coat of black 3.0 has a really, really long way to go to get to this kind of black, because um, this, is, this is dark. This is really, really dark. So anyway, uh, I'm holding out hope. We're gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna paint this, and we have one more day to let it dry, and then we'll see what the final results are. Yeah, I don't think this worked out too well. Uh, I had high hopes for this, but now that it is dry and I take a look at it in the light compared to the other materials that I've been using, uh, unfortunately, the uh, rubber sheet coated with the black 3.0, it looks very, very gray. When you put it up next to this, uh, you can see a huge difference. Uh, this is black, even under the studio lights, it's black. This definitely looks like a dark slate gray. Um, my original material down here really falls somewhere in between. So I guess ideally I should try to find a really large sheet of this material because this is the closest thing I can find to a pure black. Um, the black 3.0, it's very matte. And, you know, in its defense, in regular room lighting, just ambient room lighting, it really does look super, super black. It's just when you shine studio lights on it that it turns this gray. So it's not going to work for my application, but nevertheless, I think it's pretty cool stuff. I'm sure I'll find uh, something else to do with my, I don't know, half, probably, yeah, it's about a half bottle left of this stuff. Uh, better luck next time, I guess. But thanks for watching.